First of all, I would like to thank you very warmly for being here. As you know, we are uh, in, uh, in PSA uh, preparing now to uh, build our next uh, long-term plan for the company. And of course, uh, building the long-term plan for the company means understanding the trends uh, of the societies in which we operate. And among those seven big trends, one obvious one is the climate change. And, um, I would like to take this opportunity to discuss with you, being a, a high-level uh, expert on this matter, uh, about a few things uh, so that we can feed uh, the upstream thinking of the company that uh, will prepare uh, this next midterm plan. This plan will go up to 2030, which means long term for us, but at the same time it's quite, uh, quite short because things are moving very fast. and. Uh, you have already told me that they will move even faster than we think, which is, of course, something which is paramount to our company. And, and my mission as the CEO of this company is to prepare this company for the future, to ensure its sustainability, and, of course, to support the societies in which we operate. One of the things that puzzles me, and I would like to start with this, uh, with this tricky question, uh, if you allow me, is uh, COP21, the uh, climate change agreement that was signed in Paris, um, involved, if my understanding is correct, around 180 countries. We could read in the media um, a few weeks ago that among the 180 countries that signed the COP21 agreement, only nine were meeting the commitments of this agreement currently. And more surprisingly, among the nine that are meeting those commitments against the 180 that signed this, uh, this document, you cannot find the big European leaders. You cannot find uh, the big countries of Europe. This seems quite contradictory and quite puzzling, looking at uh, all the feedback we get from the citizens who seem to be extremely uh, conscious of the urgency to meet this climate change uh, challenge. How do you understand this uh, uh, contradiction? Well, I think we are in a situation which is uh difficult to cope with when we look at the figures, the figures from science, we should get rid of uh, everything which is uh, fossil fuels. Uh, some, some time before the end of this century, you can depend whether you want to stay under a two degree uh, limit or a 1.5 degree uh, warming limit. But uh, you, you, you should at, at some point get rid of everything, more or less, in terms of uh, emissions. So this is something which is uh, difficult, and there is no uh, green button that people can, can switch, <laughs> and that would uh, allow us to, to be uh, uh, safe uh, as concerned uh, climate change. So the, the kind of indications which were given by COP21, and the governments have agreed to sign that and have committed themselves, but they are very difficult to, 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 uh, uh, to sustain and to, to maintain. So th th there is a, a risk, yes, of uh, all the propositions which were made at, at the time of COP21 uh, being not respected. There, there is this uh, strong risk. And I think what will matter a lot in, in the years to, to come are, are, is, is uh, the way the public opinion, the civil society, will react to, to this kind of uh, shift between uh, what is supposed to be done, what is actually be, being done. In addition to that, the, the, the pressure of the, of the society will, uh, will be in, indexed, in a way, on the pressure of the climate itself. If uh, the signs of climate change become more frequent, and there are all uh, reason to believe it will, they will, uh, then the pressure of society will be stronger. And I, I see already the signs of uh, people being a bit uh, intrusive in, 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 in the behavior of uh, different people, different leaders. What do you do yourself in your daily life? So I think, yes, th th this kind of um, distance between what should be done and what is being done 
will certainly in, in the next uh, years uh, create uh, more and more reactions in the next decades, uh, certainly in the next years, I think also. I think uh, it uh, sends us uh, back also to the idea of uh, who is in, a, in capacity really to, to decide in, in these domains. Uh, even at national level, uh, we see that the decisions that command uh, greenhouse gas restrictions uh, in, the, in the emissions depend of the international level. In fact, uh, above our head, uh, only 1.5% uh, of the greenhouse gases are from French origin. And uh, they, they also depend on what is being done at any level. And the, the, the most uh, local <laughs> levels. So they, I, I think it's, uh, it's a problem that we've not faced completely in, what, in all its dimensions. Right, and you see, what you mentioned for me is paramount because it brings us back to um, the speed at which we should change to uh, address this challenge. And of course, if you want to change fast, you, you need a high level of leadership, being political leadership or corporate leadership or scientific leadership. And for people to accept a significant change in a very fast way that eventually could impact their lifestyle, uh, it means we need to explain to them what this means. And one of the things that strikes me is that while we are being imposed as an automotive industry, a very fast change uh, without any kind of discussion, because this is exactly what the European Parliament vote uh, for minus 40% in 2030 uh, was. Uh, the European Parliament voted for minus 40%, whereas uh, the industry was recommending minus 20. Uh, I don't challenge the minus 40, because this is what we are going to do, but I, I just see and I know that to achieve minus 40, in a situation where the recommendation was minus 20, that will uh, mean a significant change in my company, which uh, will be done because I trust my people and they are uh, excellent people. But uh, of course, there will be some um, spoilover. There will be some consequences around the company that will be visible to the societies in which we operate, which means this leadership that we need to have to bring everything in the right direction is also something that visibly is challenging uh, our political leaders because they sign a commitment at COP21 level, but then in their own societies, they face a lot of challenges to implement uh, the directions and the changes that need to be implemented in the society in order to meet the commitments of COP21, which means we are facing uh, a challenge of leadership, political leadership, scientific leadership, corporate leadership, in order to explain to the people why this is going to impact their lives. And I think the automotive is a very interesting case because it's only the visible uh, part of the iceberg. Uh, we are talking about transportation, we are talking about mobility, freedom of mobility, but in fact, what is at stake from our perspective is that uh, the Western lifestyle that has been created over the last 50 years is very much based on carbon footprint, intensive carbon footprint, and if this needs to change, which obviously needs, then the whole lifestyle of the Western uh, society needs to change, which goes far beyond the automotive mobility device problem that we will fix, of course, because we have the technology to fix it. And this is something that we have been bragging, saying that we need a 360 degree approach, a full strategical management of this lifestyle change. And we can see that in European countries, people so far, they do not understand and eventually they do not agree with the fact that their lifestyle needs to change dramatically and significantly. So there is this growing contrast between what I would call, or my people would call, the brutality with which the European Parliament has imposed uh, the CO2 emission uh, reductions with huge fines. Uh, those fines can kill the company, and our people understand that. So they will, they will shift, they will change, we will give them the capability in terms of technology to bring the zero emission mobility devices to the market. But at the same time, we can also uh, anticipate that outside of our company, some significant uh, society changes are needed. And my, uh, my question to you is, 
do you think that we are on the same pace? Because from one side, we get threats to the uh, existence of our company with fines, huge fines, several billions of euros that could be enforced in the on the company if we don't do this and that. But at the same time, we don't see the investment on the infrastructure. We don't see the political leaders explaining to the people that they need to change their lifestyle in depth. We don't see all of those other dimensions that are needed to make a consistent move uh, in the right direction. What's your feeling about this contrast on the speed? Well, I think the decisions concerning climate change have been based basically on some kind of uh, uh, backward uh, uh, computation. We start from what should be done if we want to meet such or such target in terms of uh, warming. And then we, we go back to things which are the, the, the simplest, uh, how much uh, 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 greenhouse gases are we able to, uh, are we authorized to emit? Who is emitting? And what, what should be then the, the culprit? Well, we try to, to, to reduce uh, uh, the emission uh, of. All, all that uh, is, uh, mean that th there has been uh, a lot of attention given to the diagnostic, to the alert, to the diagnostic of what uh, should be done. And I see many less debates about uh, the, the solutions. I, I agree completely that the solutions have to be, uh, as you say, 360 uh, degree solutions where uh, we look at all the parameters of the society. I don't think we can uh, do uh, otherwise. And those are sectors of society which uh, suffer uh, from uh, the situation. I've been uh, speaking with person from Atelier Carmont who say that, well, all the measures that uh, are proposed right now are measures that uh, uh, address uh, the, the, the most uh, the poorest fraction of the, of the society in, in, in some way. So I, I think one has to be very uh, conscious of, of, of this, and I think we need probably more, uh, uh, more debates on all the, and uh, uh, an holistic view of all the, the constraints. It's also valid for science because we, um, we are in a situation where we, we have been discussed, I have been discussed, and this is my, my, my issue, mostly the, the, the climate problem. But just beside, there is a, a problem of biodiversity, there is a problem of long-term pollutions, and of course there is a problem of how we, we, we manage to, uh, to fulfill uh, all those conditions in a world uh, in a world uh, which is a bit shrinking because there are more people on uh, space that we need to, to share. So all this reflection is, is coming now, I feel. Uh, probably all the debates we have had on uh, climato-scepticism, whether the diagnostic of the scientist were, was, ro was wrong or right, all, all that has uh, made us uh, lose a lot of time. So we, we are beginning those uh, kind of uh, uh, are d difficult uh, questioning, difficult, uh, uh, and at the level of the society, I think the society is not completely uh, ready. And I would say that's when I say society, it, it goes from uh, educated leaders to to to, to the, the, the society at large. So I have one question, and myself uh, uh, corresponding to that, you you are a, a society. Uh, you, you, the, 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 response, the chief of a society, which is a, a, a car of, uh, of buildings, uh, well, most of your activities to build cars. But do, do you think that uh, the, the, the transportation uh, world will be the same in uh, 30 years from now, let's say? And uh, do you think that the, the, the kind of targets, products uh, that uh, this company uh, will uh, address, will, will, will create in the future, will be the same, or uh, should there be, uh, I don't know, uh, new ways to, to have uh, public transportation, and new ways? I, I, I have the feeling that uh, when we say the world must change, then there, is, there should be new concepts also about uh, how we will displace in the future that should emerge. Yes, of course, thank you for your question. This is a $1 million question, of course, and, uh, and this is uh, the reason why we are having this, uh, this chat with uh, you as a scientist, uh, expert scientist, and a few other 
people is that we, we believe that the humankind uh, wants to be free of its own moves. We believe that uh, you and me, we want to decide by ourselves when we want to go to place A, place B, and we will be looking for a, a way to reach that point in a comfortable and safe way. So freedom of movement for us is totally linked to humankind expectations. From there, uh, our mission is to bring to, uh, to the people uh, a way to uh, meet an expectation, which is I want to be free of my moves, I want to decide spontaneously to go X, Y, Z, and I want to go there in a safe and comfortable way. And this is something that we have been seeing for the last century, uh, because as you know, Peugeot is a 208-year uh, company. We see that the humankind is always looking for safety and comfort. This is constant across the decades. So our mission is to bring a solution that is, of course, uh, within the frame of things which are acceptable for the societies in which we operate. And I believe that we are now facing a, a significant risk that we would like to avoid is, from one side, we have highly technology-driven uh, mobility devices, autonomous cars, highly connected, zero emissions, etc. And in that direction, uh, what we see is that those cars will be extremely, extremely expensive, which means only uh, accessible to very wealthy people, which is a kind of very uh, elite-driven mobility, which of course is not the answer for the needs of mobility of the population. So that's one direction, which is very, it's shrinking because nobody, uh, not everybody can afford a 70 or 80,000 euro car to have an autonomous, uh, highly connected, uh, fully uh, electrical vehicle. That's not possible. On the other side, if we have um, vehicles which are very expensive, but also very clean, very sustainable in terms of uh, uh, clean mobility, then possibly they have to be shared. So if you think about uh, a shuttle in specific lanes in urban areas, you can think about an autonomous shuttle, zero emission and highly connected. Uh, when I was a kid, that shuttle name was a tramway. <laughs> was when I was say. a kid, <laughs> that was 50 years ago. So it, it's not uh, anymore uh, the right answer, but it looks like this kind of shared mobility because the mobility device is very expensive. Now, you see this is very polarizing because it means one, one side, if you are wealthy, you can have uh, individual mobility device, highly technological. On the other side, if you are not wealthy, you, you only have to be mobile by sharing the mobility devices with some, some, uh, some other citizens. We think that this polarization is not the right answer. We think it is not enough. We think that we need to bring an answer to all the people, uh, which means uh, working on the affordability of the mobility devices that would be zero emission, uh, which is, which is a, a question mark. Because you see, what people have a hard time to understand is that the zero emission mobility is not a problem for the car companies. We can shift. You see, people do not imagine to which extent PSA could become an agricultural company, could become a pharma pharmaceutical company you see, a healthcare company. We can completely change. And people do not realize that uh, we don't have to be a car maker for one more century. But then, who is going to bring the answer to their mobility need? That's the question mark. And what kind of mobility? You see a big divergence between urban areas and rural areas. We see this diversion will need different kinds of answers. And this is also important to understand. Uh, the population will not accept that uh, decision makers living in urban areas <coughs> make decisions for themselves in urban areas which are contradictory to the needs of people living in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And we see that affordability of zero emission mobility devices is going to be a key question for the future. So we are looking for those solutions. Uh, and you see what's going on now in France and will appear in the rest of Europe is that people will reject the fact that we restrain their mobility of uh, their freedom of mobility if they don't understand the purpose, if they don't understand the other kind of lifestyle that the political leaders would like them to adopt. 
so for our company, we are reasonably um, uh, conscious of the fact that we can change. And we don't intend to be the dinosaurs of this, or of this shift, global shift. We, we can move fast. Which means at the end of the day, I think the key question we need to, to answer is how do we make sure that sustainable mobility is affordable? And how do we protect this basic need of humankind, which is spontaneous, safe, and comfortable mobility? That's where we are putting the focus. But of course, this is very uh, upstream thinking. And uh, we can change based on your feedback, based on the feedbacks we get from uh, many other stakeholders. But you see, one thing I would like to convince everybody about is that we can change, and we can change very fast. We have the technology, but I think the speed that is being imposed on the industry to bring fully electric cars will not meet the uh, citizens' expectation on affordability, and then will fire back on the political leaders on the fact, OK, you want me to be zero emission uh, driven, very good, but I cannot afford this car. So what do you do about it? Could you reduce the taxes? No, because you are not reducing the public spending. So you cannot reduce the taxes. Can you increase the budget deficits? No, you cannot, because you have an agreement not to do so. So the room of maneuver of the political leaders who are trying to impose this high speed of change may be limited for them to be able to create some breathing spaces that give the society the capability to adapt to this new world. But the the car companies and my company will not be lagging behind. Eventually, we'll be leading. But be careful with the spillover and be careful with the tensions in the society, because I don't think our political leaders have the breathing space to impose such a high speed of change. On the companies, they can, because they can make the laws. And the laws are imposed on us. And if we don't comply, which of course we will, we will get such a big amount of fine that eventually you may disappear. So that's not the problem. They can enforce on us whatever they want. But then if we start moving at the speed that they are imposing on us, are they able to convince the citizens and the societies in which we operate that their lifestyle needs to change? Well, uh, this is ext extremely interesting. But I, I think uh, what, you, what you say is, uh, uh, you say the, the word uh, society a lot of times, which I think is is is, is okay because uh, the key problem now is, uh, of course, that as I said, we, all the, the decisions, all the uh, the kind of uh, beginning of implementations of different uh, laws or different uh, uh, measures have, have have been done from the diagnostic above to the. the to, to, to the bottom, top down, top down in top down way, uh, scientifically top down. Let's say. Now, uh, I, I think the, this creates uh, in in the society a lot of anxiety. I mean, uh, we we've been uh, climatologists uh, successful, uh, unfortunately, in this way to create, I think, anxiety, and we see this anxiety in the votes in many many aspects. Sure. So, there is a problem of. Uh, uh, helping the people to understand what may happen, what are the options. Because I think the, the, the key uh, problem we have now is, is this. So what do you think what can be the, the role of, of uh, uh, big companies like yours in participating to, to this uh, 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 interaction with the society by providing uh, ideas, by providing uh, uh, some underst a better understanding of what is going on, because I think that will be the key of what will happen in the future. You see, it's a question where um, I often uh, um, face uh, difficult uh, evaluation for myself. I'm a European citizen from one side, so I'm very passionate about what happens in Europe, what should happen or is not happening in Europe. And from the other side, I'm the head of PSA, so I have responsibilities towards the communities in which my company uh, operates. So those two things from time to time are difficult to, uh, to converge. But one thing I would like to share with you is that, uh, as you know, there was a, a big German uh, car maker that uh, cheated on the emissions a few years ago. And uh, this fact has totally broken 
the relationships between the political leaders and the uh, uh, car companies in Europe. That link is broken. Uh, actually, people in Europe, uh, in Brussels, they don't want to listen to us. Um, I think it needs to change. Uh, the political leaders, starting with the European ones, cannot consider that the companies that will bring one part of the solution to the sustainable mobility of European citizens, they cannot stay in a position where they don't want to discuss with the car companies because they believe that all the car companies are crooks. This is not a sustainable, thoughtful, and reasonable political position. This needs to change. That's point number one. Point number two, of course, um, uh, we, we understand that we need to bring uh, the solutions, uh, but we need also to understand that this is uh, an industry which has a significant lead time. Significant lead time means um, a new technology like electric vehicles or um, hydrogen-driven vehicles. It's a 10 to 20 year lead time in terms of development, <coughs> which means that if you don't create a reasonably stable environment in terms of regulations, nothing will pop up. And if, if it doesn't pop up, then uh, the temptation for the governments is to impose. This has been done uh, in Europe where the governments are taking the responsibility, the scientific responsibility, to select electric vehicles as being the right answers. So it's not anymore a technology neutral regulation. It is a technology that has been imposed on the car makers. And frankly, electric vehicles may be a good answer, but everybody needs to understand that this responsibility in terms of scientific responsibility has been taken by the governments, not by the car companies. Why? Because there is distrust. Because the governments, starting with the European Union, do not trust the car makers because of that cheating coming from a German car maker. And this is a counterproductive, counterproductive to the citizens. The citizens need to have a better collaboration between the governments from one side, the car makers on the other side. And they cannot just start from a position where they say all the car makers are crooks. That is not productive for the citizens. And the citizens expect from us a better collaboration for a very simple reason. I have 16,000 engineers in my company. It's better that I put my 16,000 engineers working on the most cost-effective zero emission solutions for the citizens than just implement what has been instructed to us by the governments. So because that power of scientists, as you know well, it's very high. This is where the creativity comes from. Eventually, this is where the affordability ideas will come from. So there, there is something which is broken between the political leaders and uh, the car companies in Europe, and this needs to be fixed as a foundation for a more productive collaboration. Uh, the, the other thing is that uh, if we have a regulation which is not technology neutral, this is going to create a big problem. Why? Because when people come to me, many friends, uh, the members of my family, they come to me and they say, Carlos, I have to change my car. What should I buy? Should I buy a clean diesel? Should I buy a petrol? Uh, should I buy electric vehicles? Should I buy a plug-in hybrid? And today, the only answer I can give them is, if you are asking me this question as being my friend, is because you would like, you would like to avoid to make a mistake in terms of investment because a car is a big ticket investment. So you want this investment to be uh, uh, an efficient one for the next 10 years. But if you ask me, because I'm your friend, you expect from me to give you a sincere answer because I am your friend. But the only answer I can give you today is, I don't know, ask the government. Because the government is taking the responsibility to change the rules in a way which is so brutal that eventually your investment will be a bad one in a couple of years if the government decides to change the direction. This is the direct consequence of having a regulation which is not technology neutral. And this is very counterproductive to the citizens because we are not being challenged on what we know best, which is to be creative on technology and bring the most cost effective zero emission solutions to the, to the market. And this is something that, of course, with your help and your support, scientific community should call for a better collaboration, should call for a, a, 
a lower level of distrust between the different stakeholders because this distrust is not helping the citizens. And you see that if I say the scientific responsibility is taken by the governments through the regulations which are imposed on us, and if we don't comply, we are dead because of the fines, and we will comply, then it puts all the responsibility on the governments not to be wrong on the scientific approach, which is huge responsibility. You know, it's highly complex matter. On top of that, if we say, we car companies, we are going to shift faster than you think, but it's going to spill over. And you have to cope with the consequences of the speed at which we are changing, because you are imposing on us to, speed, to change at a speed that is much higher than what we recommended. It is fine, we can do it. Then, you as a government, not you personally, not me, but the government is facing what? Their capability to explain to our people, to the citizens, that their lifestyle based on a high carbon footprint needs to change. Do they have this ability, this vision, to show that there is a better life at the end of the road? So far, they did not demonstrate that, which means that we are going fast and strong uh, in a direction which may be a lock. And as a European citizen, I would like to avoid that. I would like to avoid that we lock the system by imposing on people a change in their lifestyle that they may reject. Because if they reject that strongly in a democratic uh, region, then the governments will change, and eventually the new governments will not be so supportive of uh, this uh, climate change protection that uh, we are trying to fix. You see, there is a big, big problem, which comes from the fact that there is no 360 degree approach. There is no strategic approach on all the different levers. Energy, clean energy, uh, carbon footprint of battery manufacturing, carbon footprint of battery uh, recycling, uh, zero emission mobility devices, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure investment for the people to feel comfortable to buy uh, zero emission vehicles, Tax revenues. So far, nobody has explained what you do with the 414 billion euros of tax revenues from petrol and diesel in Europe. Are those 414 billion euros be put on electricity? Then the cost of mobility is going to be sky high, and people will not agree with that. So you see, the whole 360 degree approach needs to be managed in a strategic way. And this is something we know how to do in the companies, because when we prepare the strategic plan, this is what we do for ourselves. But if there is distrust between the governments and the car companies, how can we help the governments to make a better job on this matter? This is a key question. Sorry for being long. No, I think it's uh, very interesting. Uh, I would say still that uh, this doesn't completely answer my questions concerning the, the, the population and, 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 and the people in the... Because what is happening, and uh, I see that uh, in, in many respects, uh, and it's also something that can be uh, uh, said for, for, for the scientific community, is that uh, people are debating about those uh, issues in, in close uh, circles, generally. Mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, so there are decisions which are being taken, and for uh, uh, while we were speaking about the acceptance of those uh, uh, decisions by, by, by the population, what was required from the sociologists and from the uh, human scientists was to, to help us to have acceptance from the population, which they never accepted to do themselves. Uh, and because they, they think and they write that what we need is a better capacity to uh, uh, have the people in the cities in, the, in, in, the, in, in our countries, uh, appropriate themselves uh, the, the problem, the options, and uh, even have uh, capacity to discuss that when there are some uh, key moments in the, in the life of the city. We've had, for example, two, uh, two months or three months of uh, uh, strikes uh, concerning the, 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 the train and the railway system, which is uh, at the heart of how we, we move in this country. Or, 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 and uh, with almost no debate, no public debate about uh, what, what, what kind of uh, uh, railway system we should have, which would be complementary to the, the other uh, options we have to, to, dis to displace ourselves. So 
I, I think that, that there is a need to, uh, to put a bit more the, the citizens in the face of early debates. Yeah. Uh, and this is not really occurring. And what we tried to do uh, in, in, in Aquitaine was to, to, to look at that. And yesterday we had a meeting at uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure, which was called uh, um, Climate Change, uh, uh, Science Change. <laughs> should, should, we, should we change our, our way of doing science because of those problems? And I do think so. Yes, I do think so because uh, I think we are uh, confronting ourselves to uh, situations which we have not been exploring uh, so far between, for example, um, uh, food uh, and alimentation issues, so that's for agriculture, which requires some space, uh, with um, uh, the problem of uh, biodiversity, and how do we find also the space to respect biodiversity, and how do we find the, the, the space to build uh, all, all those infrastructures we need for, for the uh, life in common. And uh, it's something that is not generally uh, uh, looked directly by, 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 by investigated directly by, by, by science. It's something which uh, is more the, um, discussed in, uh, well, in a confused way in the cities. And, and, Growing but confused, so I think th th this issue of how we, we make sense of all the, the motions we see in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cities, and in, in the countries and along the citizens, is something that has not, to my, my, uh, as far as I know, being resolved right now. We are, we are still in a situation where, uh, and many people feel uh, hostages of uh, this lack of uh, uh, information being. Uh, Transferred. Myself, I, I've been uh, asked uh, many times about uh, what we should do for such and such aspects linked with climate change. I would say that uh, probably, in spite of my initial formation, everything which, which is linked with uh, potential new technologies is, uh, is a domain where I have the least capacity to, to answer. Because, well, it's not easy to find information, it's not easy. So that's was I was a bit asking, is, is, is there um, some uh, capacity maybe from the, uh, the, the big companies, and uh, that's true for uh, uh, car f factories or, 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 as well as uh, people that uh, are looking for energy sources, and uh, to, to, to provide a bit more vision of the future uh, f to the citizens. And these visions may also be personal, there may be options, there may be but something like that is needed. And maybe a question is, do, do, do you have something, some personal vision we'd like to? So this is, uh, of course, the key question. And you see, I completely uh, agree with you on the fact that what we need is to move from a highly punitive approach uh, against the current lifestyle of the citizens and show them a vision which is attractive. What is the new lifestyle that, should, that we should uh, uh, look at in the future that would be attractive, uh, comfortable, uh, enjoyable, uh, which is not only based on you cannot do this, you cannot do this, you should do this. If we only go on the punitive, the punitive direction to bring people to what a few leaders think is the right thing to do, then I, I believe we are going to lock, you are going to lock the society. And I think it's going to be chaos and a mess. Now, if we were able to explain that you can have a, a great life with the great values and a, a certain level of uh, safety and comfort uh, without being based on the cupboard footprint uh, that we currently have, I think that's the way. You know, I am a, a winemaker uh, on a private basis, and I have a few, uh, a few pieces of land where I make uh, vineyards. And I understand perfectly what a very simple lifestyle, very enjoyable, a very, a very nice, if uh, sometimes hard, lifestyle can be. So I know that there are other ways to be uh, uh, having a joy and a happiness in life than just being based on a highly covered footprint. But of course, I am also a privileged guy, which means that how can we explain to the citizens that there is a better life that they can reach without uh, staying in the current frame that they have been living in. 
And of course, uh, what the companies can bring to this is uh, the technology that makes uh, a low carbon society be happy and, uh, and safe and, uh, and secure. Uh, as you know, uh, we have been using electric vehicles and their batteries as uh, energy buffers uh, and try to connect that with the homes so that the homes can be autonomous in terms of energy, etc. All of this is our contribution in terms of technology. And we are absolutely eager to do that. There is absolutely no limits on, on our side. At the same time, at the same time, we also need to recognize that if we don't make sure that our companies in the current business model can be sustainable, then we will not be able to contribute to the society. You know, if, if uh, I don't take care of the fact that in a couple of years, uh, <coughs> the profitability of our company could collapse because of uh, the cost of batteries and the price at which people would like to buy electric vehicles, if my profitability collapses, eventually my company will be in danger. Uh, that would be a big problem for, for uh, many people. But on top of that, I will not be able to contribute with more uh, technology-driven solutions for, for the society. So I think you are totally right. We do not have currently, in our political spectrum, somebody who is able to explain what is the enjoyable life that people could target at with a low carbon footprint. This currently is not, is not there. Uh, it is neither my capability nor my ambition to be a political leader, uh, which means uh, I'm not the guy who is going to explain that, but I'm the guy who can support that. I can support uh, with the proposals from my company, which need to be affordable uh, zero emission mobility, which need to be how can I use the car as an energy buffer to support an autonomous home in terms of energy. All of this I can contribute to, as long as there is a, a, a full 360 degree approach that gives the full picture and that moves away from punitive regulatory driven constraints to something which is something people aspire to. They, we need to inspire them to aspire to another way of life. Uh, this is where we are basically. But I think we, we need to work much more between scientists that can explain the sense of what's going on because if you, if you look at the current credibility of the stakeholders, credibility of governments is very low. Credibility of car companies is very low. Your credibility is very high. And I think that uh, you also have a, a, big, uh, a big word, a big saying in terms, what is the pace at which we should be moving, not to break part of the society that could bring solutions to the other part of the society, because if we just say, well, all the car makers are crooks, okay, fine, but then if they don't bring you some part of the solution, how are you going to reach the destination? And I think the scientific community um, has a big role to play, which is to challenge governments, companies, to work together in a more efficient and productive way with less threats, more sense of responsibility of what we need to achieve all together. And I think if scientists can explain to the people that there is a better life with a lower carbon footprint and that governments will work with companies in a way which is different from just taking their money away or putting big fines on them, perhaps we can build a better society, a better community. So that's the world in which I would like to live in with your support. Thank you very much. I would say that uh, the uh, scientific community uh, realized that this is a responsibility it has now to try to find uh, some uh, uh, solutions which are compatible with what people think. We, we live in uh, an uneducated uh, countries, and uh, we have also to listen to people. And uh, I, I'm a Democrat. I think we, we have elected people that they have to take the decisions, and uh, neither the companies nor, nor, nor the, the scientific community or the experts of any kind should take the decisions. Uh, uh, but we, we have to get near from what is needed as information and what is uh, and that's something where we have a lot of space to, 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 to move try to find really the, the science and the, uh, the, the scientific uh, uh, framework that would uh, bring us very close to the, the needs of decision closer than we are right now and this is a responsibility also we, we, we have to, to try to 
uh, to deal with, to, to confront us with in the future. So very, this was a great yeah. chat, <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank you very warmly for your insights. I think uh, you are helping us to uh, have a much deeper vision of what we need to do to contribute, and uh, I, I really want to thank you. And I'm going to read this book because I'm sure I'm going to learn yeah, a lot of things. It's a bit uh, heavy. Uh, no, it's, it's perfect for holidays. <laughs> thank okay, you very much. thank you very much thank for your... I was going to discuss uh, with you. Thank you. Very Bye. great to be here. Thank you very much. My point. Thank you. Mm -hmm.